I never thought I'd see the day where DC Studios would become the new Tyler Perry Studios, but here we are. Coming to paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Godbreaker, the man who rules the world, takes on the Asgardian God of Thunder in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Pre-order your copy of John Haynes, Godbreaker at online booksellers today. When James Gunn announced the new DC Cinematic Universe, I saw him making the same mistake that Tyler Perry makes with many of his projects. Now, Tyler Perry is known for making some of the worst movies and TV shows as related to media, and he's known for not really focusing on the quality of his productions, but only on the quantity of them. And I noticed that same pattern with many of the projects James Gunn announced as part of his first chapter of the new DC Cinematic Universe, and I believe that his first chapter of the new DC Cinematic Universe may be his last because he's following in the footsteps of Tyler Perry and not looking to lead a team of individuals in creating projects that could be consistent and flow together in a synergized fashion. No, what he's looking to do is take total control because he does not trust anyone to go out here and produce quality projects. Now, one of the things that has hampered the Tyler Perry Studios is the fact that Tyler Perry does not trust anyone to work on his projects, and he looks to do almost all of the work himself. Now, this is one of the reasons why Tyler Perry Studios does not have a writer's room and does not have a staff of writers right now, because Tyler Perry wants to be the only one who writes all of the scripts for his movies and TV shows. And I'm noticing a similar pattern as related to control with James Gunn. Now, James Gunn is, as part of his first chapter, Gods and Monsters, for the DC Cinematic Universe, is saying that he's going to be writing the animated series Creature Commandos, and he's also going to be writing the movie Superman Legacy, and he's currently writing the series Peacemaker. So he's already got three projects that he's writing. And when it comes down to writing screenplays, it's a lot harder than writing a comic book in some ways. Because a comic book is 32 pages, but writing a screenplay that's over 120 pages. And it's got to be in a style that allows the characters to move in a dynamic fashion. And also, he's writing TV series, which also is a lot of work. So you've got the person who is in charge of the DC Cinematic Universe working on three projects. And that should be troubling to anybody in the business because it shows that you've got somebody who is trying to do everything. And that's something you just don't really want to do when you're working on film productions. No, with film productions, what you want is delegation, and you want to have somebody with a vision who can go out and find qualified people to go out and be able to perform the jobs that you need them to do. So when you're an executive producer or you're an executive in charge of a production company, what you want to do is go out and find the best writers and you want to delegate the script writing to them. You want to find the best directors and delegate the direction to them. You want to delegate the director of cinematography. You want to find good cinematographers and make them your director of cinematography. And you want the best casting director so that they can go out here and cast the best actors. And you want to make sure everybody is able to do their job because you need all of these people to do their jobs in order to have a quality production. So one of the things I'm seeing with James Gunn that Tyler Perry does is he's trying to do everything himself. And you're never going to get a quality film by going out here and doing everything yourself. No, when it comes down to projects like film, you definitely need more people on hand 
so that you can go out here and trust them to do the jobs you need them to do. You want your screenwriters to be writing quality scripts. You want your um, casting directors to be doing the casting. You want your um, cinematographers to be out here scouting shots. And you want your staff to be out here doing work so that you won't have to go out here and do all of this work yourself. And when I see a person running a film studio saying, oh, I'm going to be writing scripts, that's a red flag for me because you should have a quality script in hand by your writers because like the late Sid Field used to say, writers write, actors act, and directors direct, but they all do their work when an executive leads. And I'm not really seeing strong leadership from James Gunn as related to leading his team because leading a team means that you're going to trust your, your workers behind the camera to get work done before the actors go on stage. They're going to work out all of the logistics. That's what you're going to trust your team members to go out here and do. And I'm not seeing much teamwork as related to this announcement. I'm seeing James Gunn basically trying to do everything the way Tyler Perry tries to do everything. And when Tyler Perry would go out here and try to do everything, nothing would be of quality at all. Because one person is going to get burnt out trying to write a movie, direct a movie, and even act in a movie. It's going to burn you out because writing, I know from my own experience, is very draining. It takes a lot of mental energy to write a script, and it takes even more to work with people towards polishing that script. So having one person writing two TV series and writing a movie, that's a sign to me that the quality at DC Studios is already not going to be very high because you've got a guy trying to do more than he needs to do because an executive really needs to just go out here and have a strong vision and set a course for where they want to go. But I really don't see where James Gunn wants to go with the DC Cinematic Universe and what he announced was a very jumbled mess of different projects that really do not set a linear line like the Marvel Cinematic Universe made as related to their projects. With the Marvel Cinematic Universe, what made it work was we could see a connection between movies like Iron Man, Captain America the First Avenger, The Incredible Hulk, and Thor, which laid the foundation for the Avengers, which paid off the viewers' investment in watching movies since 2008, but I don't see that with James Gunn's DC Cinematic Universe, where we have characters who don't really flow organically into each other. I mean, we've got a Superman legacy movie, and I don't see how it flows organically into Brave and the Bold, or Superman, Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. All of these projects, they just feel uneven, and they don't flow organically. And the TV series really don't flow organically like these Creature Commandos, which is animated. The Amanda Waller series, which is set in the current DC Extended Universe, just like Peacemaker. Then we have Booster Gold and Lanterns, which feel like two different types of series. Then we have Paradise Lost, which is this Game of Thrones type series. Again, nothing's flowing and synergizing together to build up viewer anticipation like the MCU did, and all of these stories, they just feel like they're just different stories, and then you have um, Gunn saying that the pro programs have different tones, and they're supposed to feed into an overreaching story, but I don't see how they're going to flow into that overreaching story, because it's just not coming together, as I see it based on concepts. I mean, the way that they should have done things, if I was running the DC Studios, is, yeah, you're going to start with a Superman movie to build hope. Then you're going to have a Dark Knight movie where we are going to have Batman in a mystery. And each of the movies is going to build deeper into this mystery as related to something like a mother box. And then you're going to have the Wonder Woman movie following with that. And again, you want to build the Trinity first. 
before you go out and introduce the Justice League. That's the way I would go out about doing this. I mean, you want to build towards a big payoff, but when I look at James Gunn's overall plans, I'm not seeing how he's building towards any sort of payoff. He's saying it's the first chapter, but that first chapter really doesn't, as I see it, lay out a way to answer the three critical questions a screenwriter like myself has to answer, and that is, who are the main characters, what do they want, and most importantly, why should we care? Because it's hard to care about this new DC universe because it's just not really put together on a solid structure, and it's not put together on a solid structure because I don't think James Gunn has that vision like many people think he has, because when you sit there and try to support a guy like Ezra Miller and that Flash movie, that's creating a rickety foundation for the new DC Cinematic Universe, and this new DC Cinematic Universe, it just feels, again, not very strong as related to structure, because a writer knows that you have to lay that structure in that first chapter, introducing characters, letting us know what they want, letting us find a reason to care about these characters, and I'm not really seeing much reason to care about a new DC cinematic universe, especially in this age where viewers are starting to get burnt out on superhero movies. No, I don't see a reason to care about the new DC cinematic universe because, like Tyler Perry, James Gunn has not really thought about a clear vision for where he wants to go, and I believe he made his announcement based on feelings as related to Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who was talking about taking the DC Universe into a new direction, and that's what I believe he got upset about as related to this alleged announcement. He got upset, went in his feelings, came up with this whole series of um, projects, and it's not really looking very strong overall. It's not looking like something that makes you say, hey, this is something I want to look forward to. No, it's looking like the closing chapter as related to superhero movies. And as I see it, the audience that's already been burnt out by being bombarded with projects is not being given a reason to go out here and watch any more superhero movies. Because when I look at this slate, which is filled with Grant Morrison stories and Tom King stories and a rehash of characters like Swamp Thing, and just, again, stories that just, they, they're, they're good for your elite-type comic readers, but there's nothing here for the casual viewer to say, hey, these superheroes are cool, because if I, again, if I were writing the entire DC Cinematic Universe, I want to make it all ages friendly, I want to make it family friendly, and I want to make it where the superheroes have some sort of hope and brightness, similar to what Paul Dini and Bruce Timm did when they were creating the DC Animated Universe. I want to bring back that hope, optimism, and fun because Zack Snyder's dark, dreary DC Universe turned off a lot of casual viewers, and while it did have a good structure as related to storytelling, as related to building the DC Extended Universe, what really hurt the D Zack Snyder's universe was the fact that it was not really executed very well because the whole Batman v Superman thing turned off everybody and people could not really get into the dark superheroes. They just really weren't into them. And we, when we think of DC heroes, we think of our icons. We think of um, paragons of ideals. We think of brightness and hope. And when I'm looking at the overall problem with Warner Brothers is that they're still stuck in that dark model and sadly, now that they're stuck in this dark model, they're still using Tyler Perry approaches to film. And again, that's not going to lead to quality productions or quality adaptations because what people want is, as I see it from DC, are basic adaptations, simple stories, like we got with Supergirl season one, which was absolutely fantastic. That's what people want in a DC universe, but we're not, we never get that because we have people like James Gunn who don't trust the audience and don't trust their team to go out here and put in the work. No, you ha if you're working on a production of any type of project, like a comic book, 
or any sort of film production, you've got to trust your, your team play, teamwork team to go out here and put in the work. So if I'm working on a project like a comic, I've got to trust my artists, I've got to trust my letterers, I've got to trust people, and I'm not seeing that trust, excuse me, established for the DZ Cinematic Universe, and without that trust, you're going to have a poor production similar to what we get at Tyler Perry Studios, because Tyler Perry tries to do everything, and when he tries to do everything, nothing works well. And that's one of the reasons why Tyler Perry is considered one of the greatest laughing stocks of cinema. Because Tyler Perry, yes, he's got good business skills, but he's not, he should stay away from the camera and trust others. And James Gunn should only get in front of the camera for maybe for maybe one project, I would say, and let others go out here and do that work. But he's trying to do everything. And again, when a producer tries to do everything, that ensures nothing is going to be of high quality. Now, if you want to pick up some of my action-packed fantasy fiction on the SJS Direct imprint, like the Isis series, the E-Steam series, the John Haynes series, the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, and novels like the Thetas and Eternal Night, you can find all of those books on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find many of these books at other online booksellers, like Smashwords, the iBookstore, Google Play, and Barnes and & Noble, and some paperbacks are available at places like Target and Walmart. And if you want to see me make more videos about comics, science fiction, and fantasy, you can donate to the Patreon, the PayPal, or the Cash App by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available in paperback, John Haynes at Death's Door. The man who rules the world takes on the Greek god of death in this action-packed John Haynes series adventure. Pick up your copy of John Haynes at Death's Door at Amazon.com and other online booksellers everywhere.